Okay, we're going to spend some time in God's Word together. So if you grab your Bible, uh, why don't you turn to Romans chapter 5. We're going to be looking at Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. All part of our series again that we've been in recently, uh, considering what's so amazing about grace. So if you've got your Bible, Romans chapter 5, I'll read verse 1 and 2, which say this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Yeah, when we're talking about the grace of of God, we're, we're talking about God's goodness, his over-the-top kindness uh, towards us. That means that we can come into relationship with him, we can know him and be with him for eternity. Uh, last time, Richard was taking us through another passage in Romans, just a few chapters earlier, in chapter 3, uh, looking at the problem that we were in to start with. Um, you might remember Romans chapter 3 and verse Uh, 23 saying this, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That kind of sums up the problem that we're in. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of, of God's standard of perfection and therefore by just our own efforts there's no way that we can come into relationship with him. There was no way that we could be declared forgiven and guilt free. Uh, We were under a weight of of condemnation and there was no way that we could get ourselves out of it. What's so amazing about God's grace that Richard was uh, showing us last time is that God provided a way in Jesus for us to be justified, for us to be declared uh, right with God. And uh, it was just wonderful to, uh, to consider that together. But you know, for some of us and maybe for many of us, we can genuinely be giving thanks for all that God has done. We can be grateful for Jesus. We can give thanks for his grace. But then still day to day, be living kind of under a weight, a heavy weight of guilt, of pressure, of not feeling like we've quite made the grade, never quite sure if we've done enough. There's always the danger then that we are just slipping back into a a different way of thinking. It's not about grace. Subtly we've been dragged into sort of thinking about laws again, living by rules, trying to earn or keep God's favour as though somehow it still depended um, on us. Feeling like the deal's never quite been done. And... uh, uh, the Christian life then becomes a bit of a grind. It's a little bit like you know we've we've been given this amazing blessing. I'm represented here by uh, some pretend money from a board game uh, in our house. We we look back with gratitude on what God's done for us, what God's given us. Uh, he's paid our debt and he's given us riches that we we could never have earned ourselves, so that we are righteous in His sight. We're amazed at God's kindness. Um, uh, but then in terms of actually living the Christian life, we're still thinking in terms of just keeping the rules. And life does seem a little bit like just pay, trying to pay God back somehow. Sometimes Christian leaders can, uh, can wrongly give that impression. If they say, for example, you know, think about what God's done for you. Now, what have you done for him? The tables get turned. Rather than considering the grace of God, now we're put back under law where we've got to earn it. And so we might be giving thanks for his kindness, but then it feels like, oh, I, I've got to try and pay God back with, with my prayer life. I, I should pray. Um, I, I should give. And, uh, oh yeah, I should be sharing my faith. Uh, I should do that. Here we are. Um, I want to serve in the church. I should do that. And before we know it, we were kind of feeling really grateful, but now we're kind of just hanging on by our fingernails. And you know, the Bible talks about reigning in life, 
being more than conquerors. And we're trying to give that impression. We, we want to give the right impression, but on the inside, we're kind of thinking, I'm not sure I can keep up the pace. There's too much. Uh, and uh, it's all becoming a bit pressuring. Yeah, maybe even in this time of, of lockdown. Yeah, to start with, perhaps you were thinking, yeah, I'm, this is going to be tough, but I know what. If, if I can muster up enough effort... If I can come up with some massive system of how I'm going to do life, then I'm going to reign in life through this situation. Yeah, I'm going to pray every day. And what happened is maybe we started to create some rules for ourselves about what we would do every day, how much time we'd spend praying, how much time we'd spend reading God's Word, how many neighbors we'd reach out to and, and offer to get shopping for, and how many of our friends we'd be saying, oh yeah, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. And then we get to the end of the day and we realize, I, I've offered to pray for all these people, um, but now I just feel weighed down by it. I'm not sure I can keep up with my, with my own expectations. I, I tried by my own efforts to reign in life, but actually I'm just feeling weighed down now, a bit, a bit despondent because, well, I've put the focus back on, on me and what I should be doing. And very subtly, it becomes that we're, we're taken away from grace and we drift, kind of drift back towards living by rules, living by laws, rather than living by grace and living by the Spirit. That's what we're called to do. So let's not settle for anything less than God would have us believe for in this life. Um, that we are called to, to reign in life. Now, this passage that we're looking at today, it starts there with the fact, since we have been justified through faith, if you're believing in Jesus and what he's done for you by dying on the cross, giving his life for you, then you are already justified. It's, it's a fact. It is a done deal. Uh, whatever your performance like, was been like in this last week, if you're believing in Jesus as your saviour, then you are a child of God. You are declared right before God. And that's a wonderful good news. And if you follow this passage through, it tells us three wonderful results, three, three amazing fruits, if you like, that grow from that first fact of our justification uh, in God. So that's what we're going to look at. Firstly, you know, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God. That's not telling us about something which might be true in the future if we do really well. It's talking for, about every believer about something that is true right now. Now the rest of uh, Romans 5 tells us a little bit about who we were before we put our trust in Jesus, before we believed uh, in him. tells us in, uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's who we used to be. We used to be sinners. Then look at verse 10 as well. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Again, it's telling us who we once were before we came to Jesus. Uh, we, were, we were sinners and we were God's enemies. That's who we were. That's not who we are now. That by the grace of God, we've been taken out uh, of our sin and our enmity, now we're reconciled, we're friends with God. That's why Paul is stating it as a fact. It is true. If you're justified, you have peace with God. God has peace with you. He's brought us together. That old hostility is, is gone. You know, sometimes, and perhaps I can understand to an extent, Christians can sometimes stress uh, we're sinners saved by grace. That's true. We've been saved by grace. But almost the emphasis is put on, but we're still sinners. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not think too highly of ourselves. Let's not think that we're, we're anything great. And of course, we're, 
We're not in that sense, but it's like the label sinner is kept over our lives. Well, you read in the New Testament, these different letters, who, who were they written to? They weren't written to the sinners in Ephesus or to the sinners in Philippi. They were written to the saints, to the saints in Ephesus, to the holy ones, to my chosen people. You could look in, uh, in, in Colossians 3 and, and verse 12, just a beautiful description of who we are in Jesus. This is just great to remind ourselves. It talks there about God's uh, dearly loved, chosen, and holy people. That's who we are because of the peace that we've been uh, brought into. So that peace is not talking about a feeling. It's not talking about how you feel when you wake up in the morning. Do you feel at peace with God? It's, it's not talking about an experience in a sense. It's talking about your position. It's talking about fact. It's talking about what is absolutely 100% always true for every believer in Jesus. You have, we have peace with God that nothing can erode, nothing can take away. Let's remember that. And also, as we move on through this passage, let's consider as well, secondly, not only do we have peace with God, yeah, God has dealt with our past, he's dealt with our sin, he's dealt with all of uh, our, our muck and mess. Yeah, he's justified us. We have, when we look back at the past, we see now God's taken care of it. But see right here that grace is not just amazing because of what it's done to our past. It says here that we stand in grace now in the present it says we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand it's the ground that the lord has planted our feet upon he's plucked us out of a gloomy slimy pit of despair and he's planted us he's set our feet down on solid ground uh, and that ground is grace. And this cuts against those who might say, well, yeah, we're saved by grace, but now we have to live by works. We have to live by law. We have to kind of earn or try and keep God's grace somehow. And, and that can lead to believers striving to try and stay in God's good books, as it were, we may have received grace, but be then stuck with law, stuck with a sense of guilt, always feeling like I've never quite done enough. Now we've got to see that we have been set free from the law. The law could not save us. It's not what it was designed to do. It was designed uh, to point us to Jesus. It was designed to show us our great need of him. Uh, it's not about then now, as a believer in Jesus, having to keep lots of rules in order to stay in, in God's, uh, God's favour. If you think in those terms, any encouragement can sound like a rule that brings pressure. You know, even, for example, the way in which we've done some of these, uh, these meetings where we've said at the, uh, towards the end, right, right now, to kind of be in fellowship with one another, to recognise that God's put us together, you know, get on the phone. Why don't you speak to someone as soon as this meeting's finished? And we kind of give that encouragement. Now, if you're living still with a legalistic way of thinking, it just sounds like another law, another pressure, another thing I should want to do. Um, rather than it being uh, just a gracious in encouragement. We're trying to earn favor. We're trying to do the right thing, but kind of slowly wilting on the inside. You know, the grace of God sets us free from that whole way of thinking, I have to do this. Brings us into a whole new realm. Now you might just think, yeah, but that sounds a bit of a dangerous way of thinking. Does grace mean I just don't have to do anything then? I don't have to pray. Uh, I don't have to give. I don't have to share my faith. I don't have to read the Bible. I'm free. Is that, is that the freedom that we've been brought into. Is that what reigning in life means? Well, 
No, we're, we're set free from legalism, but we're also kind of set free from laziness. Because that's still a misunderstanding of grace. We're still thinking about, if we think in those terms, we're still thinking about what I have to do. What I have to do or I don't have to do. But grace sets us free from that. Not to think in terms of, do I have to pray or not? But I can pray. I get to pray. And by the Spirit of God who's living in me, I, I want to. I want to. This, of course, the Spirit in us wants to glorify God, wants to exalt Jesus. So the Spirit of God in me, the Spirit of God in you, uh, delights to do God's will. So we're not thinking now in terms of what we have to do or don't have to do. We're thinking, what, what is the Spirit leading me into? Romans chapter 7, verse 4, talks about us serving in the new way of the Spirit, not in the old way of the written code of just should do's and ought to's and have to's, but this new way, which is by the Spirit. God has put his Spirit into us, helping us and leading us to grow in our relationship uh, with, with him. You know, sometimes we can just be uh, desperately trying to give the right impression uh, and reigning in life seems uh, to be just uh, about our effort. No, we are standing in grace. That's, that's where we are. We've been granted access. Um, when I was younger and, uh, and at my secondary school, uh, on the whole, I was very well behaved. Um, but there was this one occasion I was just totally intrigued. You see, there was a certain part of the school in quite an old, kind of ornate building, which we knew was out of bounds. Um, we weren't, as students, we weren't supposed to go there, but it was kind of fascinating. There was this, just this network of, of staircases and corridors and unknown rooms, and so decided one day to, to go up and to explore it, even though I knew I wasn't really supposed to be there, um, because it was out of bounds. So I'm, I'm, I'm exploring this place, but I'm feeling nervous. I've got all my excuses ready. And I'm just looking over my shoulder uh, the whole time because I've snuck in somewhere where I don't belong. And some of us can relate to God almost in those terms. It feels like we just snuck in, uh, that we weren't really drawn in but we've snuck in somehow and now nervously we're worried about what happens if we get found out. Now what we've been what we're told here is we have been granted access. We do uh, belong. You know, reigning in life is not about uh, how impressively I can live by doing lots of work and my own under my own efforts. If you look at Romans chapter 5 uh, verse 17 says, Therefore, if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? It turns out that reigning in life, it's not about doing 1,001 things to show the world how impressive a person I am. Reigning in life is about remembering I've received God's abundant provision of grace, this gift of righteousness. It is wonderfully good news. We are standing in grace right now in the here and now. And also this passage here in Romans uh, chapter 5, those few verses at the beginning of the chapter, say that we, we, we are at peace with God, we have peace with God, uh, we're standing in grace in the present, and we rejoice. Uh, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, Paul is not, I'm just turned back to the passage, Paul is not ignoring the hardships of life. He knows, he knows quite a lot about suffering, and he goes on to mention that in, in, uh, in the rest of Romans chapter 5, and indeed further on uh, in the book. But he is able to say that we, since we've been justified through faith, we boast or we rejoice 
in the hope of the glory of God. Those who are living in the grace of God are fully persuaded of God's love, come what may. Um, fully persuaded that yet yeah, we belong to him. We're not in and out of his favour. And we are, we're rejoicing in hope. There is something, there is always something glorious to look forward to. You know, if we slip back into living by rules and laws, it can seem like God's goodness is mainly a thing of the past. We're grateful, but it's kind of behind us. If we're living in the grace of God, if we know, if we're persuaded, yeah, right now I'm standing in God's grace, then we can look forward and say, there's so much ahead of us. There's more of God's goodness to come uh, than we've experienced so far. Do you know that? Are you persuaded of that? Or are you kind of looking back and thinking God's grace, God's grace and his goodness seems like a thing of the past. I, I had some once, but then I, I kind of started losing it. No, that's not the way to think. It's going to take God an eternity uh, to reveal to us and demonstrate his goodness. And that goodness is available to us right now. So whilst we're, maybe sometimes whilst we're thinking, uh, have I got enough? Am I going to get through? It's like God saying, I've got loads more goodness for you. You don't have to pay me back. You don't have to try and earn my favor. Uh, you're, you're in my favor. You're in my grace. And for the rest of your life and eternity, I'm going to be pleased to reveal my goodness and kindness to you. That doesn't mean that people living in the grace of God aren't going to experience hardship. But it means God's, the riches of God's grace will never be exhausted. Let's, let's live in that, in that goodness. There's just simply so much to come. Amen? Amen.